So, sequel to Wumi's uh, confessional statement. That's what I want to call it, confessional statement. Although um, she tried to hide, but we are, we are too smart. We are too smart. We are too smart. So, you will be listening to Wumi's statement. What really happened? What happened to Mubad? What is our role in the demise of Mubad? How did it all happen? Who sent her to do what she did? What role did she play in making sure that Mubad did not RIP? All of this and many other deep, explosive information you are about to hear this. All this while, Wumi had presented herself as someone who is innocent. In fact, some of our supporters called her prime witness. And we said, okay, no problem about that. If she's the prime witness, can she tell us what she witnessed as the prime in this RIP. But one thing that struck a lot of us strangely is that Umi is not always around, blind or deaf whenever important things, occurrences, in fact, information that will shine light on what happened to Mubad. She's not always around. Is it that she went to call the security? She went to look for Adura and Darusha? Is it that she uh, is cooking? She's in the toilet. Uh, she's sleeping. She's praying. She's feeding Leah. She's neither here or there. Whenever it has to do with Mobad. She will suddenly stop, stop existing. So people looked at it like, then you are not the prime witness. So let us assume that you are not even in Nigeria when all this happened to Mubad. No, she said, yes, I, I am. I was with Mubad. I was there. So if you are there, then she said, ah, it is unbelievable. I, I just don't understand. They say it is, it, it is not ordinary, meaning it is supernatural, meaning what happened to Mubad is beyond human comprehension and that we need spiritual eyes to see and we said no let us deal with it physically first before we talk of the spiritual aspect of it like prime boy because that's what they needed prime boy and the nurse both of them by mobad i want you to pay attention to this one from the beginning of it to the end. Do not forget to like and share. Do not forget to tap on the subscribe button. And to further encourage this channel to do more, kindly tap on that thanks button. And there was a particular nurse that usually treats Mubad, but she was not around. So spending head Bami talking about nurse. Bami could Bami could be yeah. actually yes. Spending reach out. Who is spending? Is a close friend of my husband. What does he do? They go to shows together. You know Adishabri as a DJ. We know Ibrahim as a photographer. This spending, what does he do? Thank you so much, Gifters. Thank you. He is a friend to Mobad. What does he do? I don't know. He sings, rap, dance? No. Just they have been friends for three years now. He was the one that recommended the particular nurse. Yes. When the nurse came, was spending still at home? Spending left on Monday morning. She confirmed spending left on Monday morning. And he said he would get the nurse to come the next day. No. The next day. He said he will get the nurse to come and treat my husband. And the nurse was been treating spending for over two years. And he gave Bami the nurse contact. That was how Bami got the contact of the nurse. Let's rewind it. 
you've asked who was we, we we've asked who was the deceased and you have answered you've asked when it was deceased died when the disease died and asked where and when did he died we are now on how he died so it was the after effect of the medication given to him by the nurse that triggered the reaction that necessitated you going to the hospital at the same day yes when he died yes if you observe i didn't make any references to any of your statements we just take one or two and i will be done with you is that okay yes on the night he had a show on the tent did you see anybody related to mr fashola naramali at the event i was in the prado all through i did not step out so you you wouldn't have known if anybody related to mr fashola was there i wouldn't have known okay so after after the question was asked let me start you did not see okay because you were in the car all through you did not see this incident i did not but you are in the car all through so you could not have made a link between them and the incident the question the reason for this proceedings is those four questions so i'm i'm saying i'm so i am saying most of the things you have said here happened months and years before he died is that correct yes and there is no link between those events and the event that that happened in the september yes when you were at when were you when we were at how he died i wasn't there if you were if you were to play the rewind button the incident that that led to him going to that hospital where he was pronounced dead was because two for two nights before he had an injury a nurse was called two days after the injury but unfortunately he reacted to the injection he was given when you called for help then you called for help for help took him to the hospital but unfortunately he died so his death depending on what the pathologist would say was it a result of that injury and medication of that day because you agree with me you agree with me or do you think the event involved the ndla event of the days that he brought with something la2 and event he had with them were the reasons of what happened to that september 12. those events are part of what led to his death so guys in this part Wumi, the prime suspect is still connecting what happened probably over one two years or thereabout to the demise of mobad where she was with mobad 72 48 24 hours to his demise so he's trying to connect it together that's what me at the corona inquest saying yes this and that led to the demise let us listen more two things i have asked you the hospital the hospital you didn't you didn't go two things i've asked you the hospital you didn't go and you have said because of the ndla you said he was fearful for the ndla and he chose not to go to the hospital that is not that is not it it was part of it i needed to explain better that was why i reached out for his corona inquest that was why i reached out for this corona inquest because i want justice for him and i feel this is the way i can express myself mr please go ahead so mr kintori please go ahead after the ndla period in february 2022 they hit him with a gun on his head were you there when they hit him i was there you saw when they hit him 
I was, I was there. I was there when they were harassing him. And when I saw it, it was too much. I was trying to rescue him from the NDLA officer. But unfortunately, they packed everybody to their vehicle. At what point were you harassing? At what point were they harassing him? When he got to the scene, we saw that Zelonitsky was handcuffed and he went to the house purposely because of Zelonitsky and his brother Adura because they were in the house. Immediately he heard the news. He said, my brother are in the house. So he went to the scene with my C, my C's girlfriend, myself and himself. And we went with his car. When we got there, we saw they had handcuffed Zinoliski and he approached the NDLA. After the officer had asked why they were trying to arrest him and the NDLA officer became violent with everybody. And when my husband was trying to ask questions, they started hitting him and attacking him. By then, we were trying to attack me too. The NDLA officer was trying to hold a gun and I was asking, do you want to shoot me? And I was only asking a question, which he should answer at this, as, as it is a citizen. I became violent with everybody. He, he became violent with everybody. And he took Zinoliski and, and the rest away with them, while they also went with my husband's car. Myself and everybody was in the car, in his car. They parked everybody inside. When we got to the estate gate, they didn't, they didn't want them to leave. So they came outside and started pulling the gun and they started harassing us and parking everybody from my husband's car and they beat me to stupor. Now, this is the part where the NDLA, that's Nigerian Drug Law Enforcement, busted the Malian house, Mobad and uh, Wumi, both of them were not there. When Mobad heard about it, he came over and um, the white substance coming out of his mouth and all of that is uh, the alleged um, water. According to him, they gave him a liquid. I don't want to call it water because I don't know what it is. They gave him a liquid to drink and to him, it was water that he drank. Why did he drink water? Did he ask for water? He said he's the only one they gave the water to and they told him, hey, you, you said you don't take hard substance right you say you don't take hard substance drink i don't know if they put something on his head to drink the water if he had not wanted to drink anything he would have drank it but he claimed that he drank it and uh, his life has never remained the same but then he went to the hospital they did some checkup and i don't know to what extent the checkup was he had already gotten the boot of a gun hit him on the score shibela Shmuda, and even Naramali said it back then that they had asked him to go for medical treatment. Mobad did not want to continue treatment with the Malian record, probably because he doesn't want to be indebted to the record label. He wanted to jack back, like escape from the record label then. Well, he went for the MRI scan, deep scan, to know if there is anything wrong with his head. Maybe he just had a little concussion. I don't know. But the result of it, um, Belashwinda claimed that he has it with him. Now, let us jump to that part that we want to know about. So, for the nurse, okay, now let me read this. Let me get this. All those, all those happening, but what led to the death was his reaction to the medication he was given that necessitates him for being taken to the hospital. Yes, but on getting to the hospital, Unfortunately, he left us. What was that? What was what happened? Yes. For that nurse, it was spending that recommended that nurse. Yes. And he said he was being using the nurse for two years. Yes. Now, did the nurse carry out any test before making medication? I was not fully present at the scene. I was in the kitchen. Who was with him? By the time you came, I was in the kitchen cooking. What's the rice? By the time you came, you met the nurse with him. Who was there? No. No, I think at this point, I want you to tell us what happened from the minute the nurse entered the room of the deceased. 
give us a broader explanation what happened. When the nurse entered, myself, Bami, my husband, it was in my son's room. The nurse was very small. The room was very small. And the nurse left my son's room to left my son's room to me and my husband's room for the medication. And when we got there, the nurse took the wound and said to the DJ that she already told him to snap the picture before getting to the house. Did he send the picture? He did. So why was she complaining? It was when she saw she was on the way coming that she saw it. Maybe her data was not on or something. Immediately she pulled out some injections. And myself and Chibami said he was he has he was an usher patient and we should be careful of the medication we administer to him. And he said, Ah, thank God. He informed her. Thereafter, she injected him here, demonstrating. After the injection, I went back to the kitchen because I was cooking and I was going, I came back, I was cooking. I came back upstairs. She was trying to administer another injection. When I went downstairs, I was not fully present. I was cooking in the kitchen. And last time I came upstairs, I heard my husband saying, remove it because he was not feeling, I'm feeling somehow. When he went to the restroom and vomited and he peed, and immediately he said he was feeling too, he was not feeling too well, that the injection was reacting to his body. And I told I held his hand and he sat down on the floor and he said we should pour him water. His brother and Bami, I shouted their names to help and they came upset and immediately the nurse was there, he was reacting that day, that way. He said there was a dream she was supposed to pass to him, a dream she should have, no, to prevent the way he was feeling. Immediately the nurse and Dijibami went downstairs and immediately I called OG. What is the full name? Idris, the photographer? Yes, Adura went to get water and poured it on him. And he said he was not comfortable, that he needed AC. And his room's AC was not working. So we carried him to our son's room and he was still breathing and he was still reacting to she stopped. I rushed downstairs to look for a car. On getting there, the mechanic was working on the car. And he said the car was not working and Adura was with me. So I took, I told him to rush to the other house, streets, to get a car. Adura came downstairs with me. And I was just that was left in the room. Adura and I came downstairs to find a way to rush him to the hospital. I was telling people passing to help me that I needed help and one of the people said I should knock on the neighbor's gate and I knocked for five minutes and he came downstairs and narrated everything happened to him. He told the people outside to help me upstairs carry my husband. And when we got outside, the nurse and Bami met us on our way taking him to the hospital and they followed us in the other car. Are we going? Boss, boss, traffic boss, at... boss, Did I hear the North and Adura and um, Bami? Bami, yeah. In another car. Now, let me read it again. I told the people to help. So my husband, and uh, to help me carry my husband. And when we got outside, the North and Bami met us on our way, taking him to the hospital. Okay. They follow us. Oh, they follow us in the car. Okay. And on our way going, there was traffic at Orchard Lane. You said so. When the nurse and Ajirebi, Aji Shebiri came back, you were already in the vehicle, about to leave. We were about to put him in the vehicle. So, whatever it is, the nurse went to buy. She never admitted it on him. Shake my shake. She shook his head. No, my lord, that will be all. Welcome back. Now, if you are not 
a diligent listener or you're not a trained listener, you will not be able to process. You will not be able to dig deep into all the statements that Bumi stated at the corona inquest. Even the answers she gave to the questions, the cross-examination. If you are not deep, you will not be able to decipher some of the utterances of Wumi. You will not be able to. Now, in all that Wumi stated, there is something that is glaring. Not because we are looking for ways of uh, dragging the alleged crime on her. No. We are not looking for ways to put it on her. Of course, we know there are certain responsibilities um, of a partner, but when you're dealing with a grown-up person, you cannot compel them. You, like, For example, you cannot force someone to the hospital unless you have an inclination and you responded to it, acted upon it, or you have experienced this or it has happened this way and you have learned from it, then you will want to contact father, mother, and everybody. You want to tell them, look, this is happening. Please compel your son to get himself ready so we can go to the hospital. According to me, she did not foresee that this was going to happen to Umi to Mobad. Umi said she did not. Now, there was a time Mobad's brother said that Umi had called and said, Ah, help me. I don't want to end up as a widow. Help me. Help me. What is this help about? How come when she called Mobad's mother, Mobad's mother did not immediately call Mobad's father? Like, hey, Umi called me. If the so-called mountain she said she went to, she heard a prophecy not directed to her generally. They just said it that there is someone here. That is something about this prophecy of a thing. Um, I don't know. We cannot blame. I don't know where she went to and I, I don't really understand. Someone is about to RIP and there is a general prophecy. Not specific. Hey, woman, I am seeing coffin. Your son placed in it already. Drag him from wherever he is. Let him be on this prayer mountain. This is where we are going to be. Until this uh, coffin drifts away and perish. But unfortunately it happened that way. I don't know why. I cannot say why. I don't know. So Mobas mother said she had given the mountain where the prophecy came 50,000 naira. As a seed against the demise of her son. But Mobad still passed away. That is a story for another day. Let's file that somewhere. So, Wumi called Mobad's mother. Question that we've all asked is, why didn't you call Mobad's father? Mobad's father would have acted promptly, made calls, or immediately arrive at Mobad's house. So she did not call Mobad's father. But Mubat's mother was called prior to this demise or when problems started. According to her, the nurse had arrived. The nurse had missed medication. The second one, Mubat started reacting to it. The nurse said, there is a third injection or a drip that I should have brought to reduce the effect of what I administered. What did the nurse administer? Is it two or three injections? We heard about pain reliever. We heard about tetanus. Tetanus. We heard about antibiotics. We don't know which she administered. She's the only one that knows what she administered. But she said there is a particular medication she should have administered. This happens when you go put yourself down in this way. When you calling 
someone who is not a professional, someone who is not authorized or licensed, when you bring in a quack, when you place yourself under the hands of a quack. And this has been a practice for a long time. A lot of people do it. They have this nurse, auxiliary nurses that treat them. Once you are sick, they'll be like, hey, hello, I'm not feeling fine. How are you feeling? They should start asking questions like, um, is your tongue bitter? Um, are you, are you, do you have dry mouth? Uh, what's happening to you? You, oh, I have pains in my joint. I have this uh, automatically. Oh, this person has fever. That's how they operate. It's always this person has fever. We've, we've all experienced this one way or the other. Going to this nurse, mm. there is a nurse because it's cheaper to go to this nurse. She will only charge you for the medication and whatever she's going to administer to you, it's easier for you to pay. Or like you go to the hospital, not because these hospitals are even, but, <laughs> oh my God. Ah. I mean, some of these hospitals are clinics. They are not really certified. They are not really certified to do what they do. So you go in there, he speaks to you, does what he needs to do, and here you are. You feel good today because somehow they got it right. Then some other time, there are other underlying issues. So people do these things a lot. Spending. Gave phone number of nurse to Wumi. Who called the nurse? Is it spending? Who gave direction to the, to the nurse? All of that does not matter. The thing is this. The nurse arrived. Administered medication to, to, to Mobad. The second one, reaction started. The nurse had checked on the wound. We are, we've been, we mean, tell us that there is a wound on Mobat's hand. Was that wound there prior to the show? What now happened in that house? The fight upstairs, what happened? When the nurse came, what did the nurse see? Was it just the reaction to the medication? Like there is something else that needed to have been administered. Now, Wumi said she had told the nurse with DJ Bami that Mobad is an ulcer awesome patient and there are certain medications he reacts to. Where did she get that information from? Probably from the hospital or from the nurse that normally treats Mobad or someone, somewhere. That's where they got that information from. The nurse only saw someone who has injury and felt, okay, this person will be in pain. Um, this person will need um, tetanus in case there is any of that around the wound area or some cuts, something somewhere, which oftentimes people get that, uh, administer that medication if you have a cut, you know, whatever it is. And third, antibiotics. Like in case, in case there is some kind of infection somewhere, this will help fight. The nurse administered the general antibiotics, antibi just the general were like, okay, that should be okay, it will work. In a similar climb, before antibiotics are administered, they will take blood sample to see which is appropriate for that person. They just don't admit, but you see what we are saying, a lot of things went wrong. A lot of things went wrong, like seriously. A lot of things went wrong, apart from the role of Wumi in all of this. Because she absorbed herself, said she was cooking and she went in and out. But with all these that we have said, Wumi, let us assume that the demise of Mobad came mysteriously. Like that RIP is already prepared. And he's going to buy, he's going to go. Let us assume that it is there. That the spirit of RIP is already with him. Maybe it's a spiritual thing, something we don't know. Okay, let us assume. Now, can we ask you a simple question, Wumi? In all of this, you are not there. You did not see. You were cooking. When you got him, he said, pour us water. You poured him water. Adura poured him water. When you guys poured in the water, everything now came down. He said he wants AC. You took him to your son's room. There is a condition in there. Then he was still feeling uncomfortable. Then you came outside, rushed, screamed and shouted, help me, help me, my husband, because the car that you guys needed was not working. And you guys had uh, prepared another one that he was going to get, an SUV. 
this and that happened. You guys did this and this. Okay, we very did. Oh, with me, you did not know. It's just unfortunate. Mobad was not allowed to shine in his family. Oh, let us even say the gods, the deity of Mobad's family, the idols of Mobad's family, the gods that the, the, the forefathers of Mobad, the ancestors of Mobad, the gods that they serve, and they are no longer serving it. The father said, no, we are now into a spiritual church where we call the name of, you know, Jesus Christ. We don't believe in this anymore. Okay, the God said, okay, if you guys will not do what I want, you will remain poor. You will not be rich. You will be scrabbling for money. You will not even have a settled home. Now, Mobad has promise on him. That's why it's called promise. Ilerio Lua, meaning promise is still the same. Aloba. But the Aloba spirit is still there saying, I need, I need my own pound of flesh. I need. So, Mobad is the one that's going to break that covenant, break everything. Is the one. Okay. So, the spirit desired to buy Mobad. So, Mobad will not break the family out of poverty. Okay. Now, Wumi, just a simple question. How come DNA is so difficult? With all you have said, the father of Moba said, let DNA be done. And I will tell you who R.I.P. my son. Simple as ABC. Why? With all you said, you've absolved yourself of everything. I am not wicked. I wasn't there. I tried my best. It happened the way it happened. My life is in the hand of God. I am innocent. I am not wicked. And we said, okay, we agree. But can you explain why DNA has become a bone of contention? Why? How come DNA has become this difficult for you? Why? Why? Because I, I don't understand why, why it is so difficult. If truly, if truly, if truly, if truly you are innocent, why? Why don't you shut all of this up once and for all? Of course, you can shut everything up by getting DNA done. ASAP. Why is DNA difficult? Why don't you clear that part of it? Why don't you clear that part of it? Why is that part so difficult for you? You just want to feed us this your innocence and expect us to donate money, give you, accept, agree. If that part of Mobad's RIP is not clear enough, if autopsy and toxicology cannot prove and show that this medication, when it is administered, it happens like this, the reaction is like that, like this and that. If they can't get, and they say, oh, Mobad passed away as a result of whatever, it is his time, if there's anything like that. Can Wumi explain why DNA is difficult? You see, it brings us back to the same, that you, at the prime suspect, there is something fishy in all that you have narrated. There is something fishy in it. You must be held at the jugular. Yes, your jugular vein. They must hold you there so that you will spit out the exact thing that happened to Mubad.